The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily represent those of this station or its management. It's time now for Where You Live with Gene Sullivan, the show that deals with the news and events that affect you the most. Whether you rent or own, live in an HOA, single-family home, or an apartment building, Gene will tackle the issues right where you live. So, from the True North Painting Studios, here is the original man of steel, Resolve himself, who stands for truth, justice, and the association way. Here's Gene Sullivan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Where You Live. I'm Gene Sullivan, and I'm broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. When you're looking for the right painting contractor, what do you look for? Isn't it someone who will respect you, your time, your property, and your budget? That's what you can expect from True North Painting. Find out more about this exceptional company by going online at truenorthpainting.com. That's T-R-U-NorthPainting.com, or give them a call at 952-831-1433. I'm also brought to you by the great folks at Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. I want to begin by giving uh, a shout-out to my producer and board op, Christopher Wider Puberty. How are you, Chris? Good, Gene. How about yourself? I, I'm doing. I'm doing great. Excellent. You know the how. How was it? The you know we had a pretty big storm here mm-hmm. uh, the uh, other day. Yep. And uh, d- did you uh, get stuck at all? Uh, no, fortunately, I only live about five minutes from the station. So, okay. So I, I you, didn't have to. You could walk then if you needed to. In theory, yes. In theory, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Only in theory, right? I I heard that. Uh, because of the the snowstorm, I, there was over 344 accidents. They said 44 injuries and one actual death too. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, pretty serious. Looks like people were uh, beginning to uh, figure out how to uh, drive in snow again. Did you get stuck at all? Um, yes, I'm always concerned about that. My car rides really low to the ground, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, it doesn't take much for it to get stuck. Uh, I didn't, but uh, I tell you, I know that uh, I've got a, a long winter ahead here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, well, folks, um, we've got a, a special uh, Where You Live uh, with a, a very interesting story. So why don't we begin with property management in the news? Property management in the news is brought to you by Home Furniture and Abbey Floor Coverings. Their showrooms are staffed with professionals who will help you choose what you need to fit both your lifestyle and budget. Whatever you need, chances are they'll have what you're looking for. Now, if you wish to avail yourself of special pricing you're not going to find anywhere else, all Where You Live listeners can call Customer Service Coordinator Lori Matson at 952 224 2663. Well, uh, for a discussion today on this uh, story, uh, you probably saw it in the news uh, about a week or so ago, and it says that uh, the uh, feds are going to sue a large Minnetonka condominium association over the ban of playing in the grass. And uh, to try and dis- dissect uh, this story and what's going on, I'm happy to have uh, back uh, Nigel Mendez, attorney with Carlson and Associates. Hello, Nigel. Hi, Gene. Thanks for having me back. I'm glad uh, you could uh, you could be here. You you're a busy man. You know, we, I've been trying, <laughs> folks. I've been trying uh, a couple of times to get this man back on uh, on the show, but uh, you've been pretty busy. It, it's been hard to uh, arrange our schedules. I'm glad this one worked out well. Yeah, me too. Now, uh, are are you working on uh, anything big with any associations or any you know a, a, a lot of associations and not, nothing uh, nothing too big and juicy just the regular workings of uh, association life. Okay, well we're going to be talking about uh, a, a claim uh, here, Nigel, this morning about uh, what might be a case of discrimination. Have you dealt with that with uh, any of your clients uh, to date? I have not any any clients get to this point where they've been sued by the government for discrimination. We've dealt with clients who are considering putting in certain rules or a homeowner will ask them 
hey, this doesn't sound right. I don't think we should do this. And they'll call us for an opinion. Uh, but luckily, uh, we haven't had clients yet. Uh, it's inevitable someday. It seems the trend is going this way, that there's more and more of these suits coming out. It, it, re- it really does, doesn't it? it and it so it, you, uh, an association, board of directors, they really need to be wise in how they uh, uh, craft uh, their rules and regulations and also and uh, how they enforce as well. Correct. Yeah, the, 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 it's two standards, how you draft it and how you enforce it. And there are yeah. two separate areas you can be sued on. And yeah. this, this case has them both. And, and we'll talk about that. But uh, for our listeners here, uh, let me uh, just kind of uh, share a quick outline or overview of the story and what we're talking about. Uh, there is a uh, large condominium association in Minnetonka that had a ban on playing in the grass. And it's drawn now a lawsuit from federal officials contending that the policy is illegally discriminating against families with children. Now, it uh, says that uh, what has uh, happened here, and maybe to take a a step back, there was a woman who uh, is not a owner of the association, if I understand correctly. She is renting one of the uh, units from a person who is an owner and a member of the Homeowners Association. She moved in back in 2010. Sometime in 2011, she uh, ended up uh, having custody of her great-grandchildren, two children ages, I think, 9 and 11. Um, And then after that, uh, what took place is there were some concerns that the association had, I think, about some of the behavior of uh, some of the uh, the children. And so they began by uh, writing some uh, letters of concerns, uh, bringing it up. And after a while, it appeared that it was uh, continual enough that the association felt that they needed to draft a new rule. And uh, they said, uh, we can't have any uh, plane in the uh, grass. We can't have uh, bicycle riding. Um, rollerblades, skateboards uh, on the uh, sidewalks uh, because they had concerns for uh, two issues. One was uh, the issue of, uh, I guess, just the the, the peace and uh, and enjoyment of the property with everybody. And then the second was they had concerns of safety. Um, You've probably seen, uh, Nigel, a couple, uh, you know, homeowner associations like this uh, where uh, the buildings are pretty close, the amount of green space is very limited, and so there, an association would have some concerns uh, about uh, uh, not necessarily being able to have uh, you know a group of people or a large group at all congregating because it could be very disrupting to other people. Does that seem to be uh, a fair rule to be able to have in place? I think it does, and especially in some of the older associations, you know that are possibly the walls aren't as thick. You don't want too much noise right outside your windows or right outside your door if they're in the hallway. Uh, and you can put rules in place, and it seems fair to put rules in place yeah. and say, you know, no congregating here, no playing games here. Um, that's fine. Yeah, It's, you know, I'm sure we'll get to it, but slightly different in this case in that some of their rules seem more targeted to children or enforced against children or what the allegations are. We'll see how the case plays out. Uh, they do have one rule that specifically says no children can play in the hallway. Mm-hmm. Um, and and with with that, you, you were you were telling me you now you think that uh, that ought to be uh, more broadly written. Is that correct? Correct. You, you know, it, their rule for the outside for the grass, you know, talks about that's a general rule. I think that was a, a well crafted rule. No 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 playing on the grass. No sunbathing on the grass. Uh, no riding bicycles. No riding scooters and rollerblades and skateboards. I think that rule is probably fine um, as long as it's enforced universally. But you can't have a rule that says no children, can't, only children can't do this. Uh, and that's where they ran into a problem, or okay. allegedly ran into a problem. You know, you know I, I wonder about this and because, again, I, uh, one thought that came to my mind, I'm trying to think of what is a, a good analogy or similar. I, I mean, I would think that, you know, in the case of, uh, let's say, a uh, a school. I mean, schools seem to be able to uh, dictate 
the behavior specifically of children. Um, and so uh, why is it that that's okay in that instance, but it seems to be more hypersensitive in the case of a homeowner's association? Yeah, well, it's not only a homeowner's association. It's any any housing yeah. aso- area. Multifamily. Multifamily uh, housing is, uh, you know, complex. Uh, there's a federal statute that says you can't do this, and that's why it doesn't apply to schools. Schools have their own sets of rules, and I think there could be some issues of if, if schools started saying, you know, only kids over six feet tall can eat at these tables and shorter kids have to eat in a corner, that could become an issue. But school rules are usually applied universally. Uh and association rules are fine as well, but when you don't apply them universally, and when you violate what the statutes say you have to do, that's where and, it and that's a and that's the real uh, issue or, or crux here. And that is, uh, there is a claim in this particular case that it's not being applied universally. But at this point, all it is is a claim. I don't know that there is anything uh, where the uh, federal government or HUD came forward and said. Here's uh, evidence that uh, has been shown to us that it hasn't been applied universally. Right, and we're not privy to that. Uh, Oftentimes, HUD will do their own investigation beforehand. They're not required to do a full, complete investigation. They can go on the facts presented to them by the the woman, in this case, making a complaint. Uh, They do allege in here that, you know, one of the rules is discriminatory on its face because it specifically says no children to do this, and the other one is... uh, discriminatory in how it's uh, enforced. Uh, They allege that uh, children were given, well, owners of units that have children were given violation letters for kids playing in the grass Mm -hmm. or riding bicycles, but adults who did the same activity were not given violations. Now, that's what it's alleged in a complaint. We don't know that's 100 percent true. Mm -hmm. And and you're right. If if that is true that's going on, then there is an inconsistency and there's something that could uh, could be... uh, I guess, uh, evidence that uh, the practice is uh, discriminatory in terms of how it's being enforced. We need to take a break right now. Let's do that. Uh, Folks, don't go away. We've got this special edition of Where You Live dealing with this. uh, uh, The federal officials suing a Minnetonka condominium association over the ban on playing in the grass. More with attorney Nigel Mendez after these messages. 